Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back. Droid Life Show. Today, episode uh, 227. It is Friday, February 21st. Uh, I'm your host, Kellen. With me, Tim. Tim, say hi. Hey, guys. How's it going? Tim here, back again in full HD. <laughs> Tim is back in full HD. Yo. All the qualities, Yo. Yo. yes. All Yo. the bokeh, all the blurs. Mm, God, it looks so good. Yes, it does. Uh, so yeah, thanks for joining us, everyone. Uh, good show today. Lots of, uh, lots of fine topics. So some big stuff this week, uh, Android 11 developer preview, not stable, but we got our first Android 11 build. Tim has a flippity floppy open, closey phony that we talked about last show. And then you ran to get it. So we didn't show it on there. There it is. Flippity floopity. Ooh. Galaxy Z flip in the house. We'll talk about that. Galaxy S 20 pre-orders are now open. Uh, some other stuff too, including, well, the fine folks at slick wraps are not having a great Friday. I'll just say that. Um, also trivia is back. Mm. You're, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, last week we didn't do trivia. We were just kind of getting through some stuff. So Tim could go get that Z flip. Uh, trivia is back. We got five questions again, five winners, $10 of Google play credit to everyone. We got you again. We're sorry about last week. Good. That was easy. Okay. Good. All right. So uh, we should probably start with, uh, oh, if you don't know what I'm talking about trivia at the end of every show, we do trivia and we give prizes away. So if you're new around here, <laughs> hang around. We'll do trivia. Yeah. As Rick say, we were actually partnering with slick wraps today for our trivia prizes. So yeah. <laughs> Good one. Trivia Riggs. provided by slick wraps. No, oh, no, it's not, no, not, to, not the day. <laughs> Let's talk uh, about them though. This is breaking news on a Friday news. morning. Uh, actually, before we get there, Josh Les just dropped two bucks. Appreciate oh. that. We also had a silent $10 donation before the show kicked off. He labels it a silent. He's done that a couple of times now, and uh, I always want to call it out, but should we let this one go? Silent $10 donation to open the show. Appreciate it. Appreciate silent it. Appreciate donor. -er. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, so Slick Wraps, back on them. Slick Wraps, uh, this morning, as we were kind of prepping for the show, we got an email from someone. Uh, who said, hey, look, I got this email from Slick Wraps and it, the the logo was changed to Slick Hacked and it referenced like, I have all of your data. You should read this Medium post and contact Slick Wraps and your local authorities and all this stuff because they've been hacked. Uh, lots of bad stuff. Anyway, the, the Medium post they linked to was um, from a... Uh, Security researcher, I guess you would call. Is that is that the correct term here? Sure. Anyways, name's Lynx on uh, on Twitter. Uh, posts up this lengthy story on Medium that says, "Hey, look, I hacked uh, Slick Wraps. Slick Wraps, by the way, the company that makes those skins that you put on phones or other technology products, similar to D Brand, might be a a company you might know. Slick Wraps is the other one. They're basically the two big ones, right? Uh, so he says he he hacks their website by uh, going to an upload page and uploads a file and sees there's this huge security hole there and goes, wow, let me see if I can upload something myself and uploads a bad file, gets into their server, takes over everything. We're talking their Zendesk support desk, uh, gets as deep into their server as he can. So deep says, uh, if I wanted to, I could have erased the entire company's <laughs> existence. So we're talking real real bad stuff here yeah so does this um sees customer data phone numbers addresses email addresses uh <laughs> supposedly gains some sort of access here to uh payment apis um it, it's looking bad reaches out to slick wraps in kind of a weird way maybe i'm just not like a internet security guy and I understand the lingo, but kind of reaches out, slick wraps, doesn't respond, reaches out again, gets blocked by them. Uh, keeps waiting, keeps waiting, kind of reaches out again, whatever. Anyway, eventually gets them and they, and says like, Hey, you should do all this stuff. And they say, do you, are you asking for a ransom? I think is what they said. And this, and this, and, and, and link says, no, uh, I just want you to fix your site and notify all of your customers and do all of this stuff like you should do by law, basically, in many countries. Uh, and so they, I think, I don't know if they blocked him again then or what, but he then emails the CEO the same thing and then he gets blocked. I mean, like, just keeps getting blocked by the slick wraps, like Twitter account and all of this stuff. Um, 
So then says, look, I gave you guys 72 hours notice. You do not want to respond to me. You're trying to cover up, found evidence that they were maybe trying to cover up the tracks that he had laid out there. And so says, uh, look, I'm just going to post this stuff. I'm going to write this thing up, post it to Medium, and then maybe they will do something. Does that. Apparently after that, a whole bunch of other people said, oh, it really is easy to hack into this website. And we think other people then jumped into the site because everyone got an email that said Slick Hacked which was not from links, by the way, third party, different party. So there's lots of people here hacking the slick wraps website <laughs> in real time, perhaps. Uh, so where we're at now is shortly before we came on air, slick wraps CEO sends out an email, um, that says, uh, <laughs> It says, uh, we are reaching out to you because we made a mistake in violation of that trust. On February 22nd, um, today's February 21st, so tomorrow they uh, are going to discover <laughs> that information in some of their non-production databases was mistakenly made public via an exploit. During this time, the databases were accessed by an unauthorized party. Uh, the information did not contain passwords or personal financial data, so they say. Uh, but people did access names, user emails, addresses. We know phone numbers too. Um, so yeah, apparently they think this all happened on February 22nd, but it's February 21st. And I believe they're a US based company. So nowhere in the US right now at the time of recording this, Tim, is it February 22nd. So kind of weird. Um, they are going to work with a third party cybersecurity firm to audit and improve their security protocols. They think you should uh, change your password if you have not yet. And they're super sorry, deeply sorry. Sorry, they are deeply sorry. More details will follow. And we appreciate your patience during this process. Sincerely, Jonathan Endicott, CEO at Slick Wraps. Yeah, I think the, I mean, the great part obviously was the social media exchanges between the the, <laughs> the white hack hatter, as I'm calling him, yes. and the- The white uh, hacker. The white hat hacker. Uh, <laughs> Stupid, uh, and and D Brand's poor third party customer support people, like, do you want a bounty? Like, yeah, that's I what mean, it was. Like, do you want a bounty? He owns the system now, people. Like, he's the one in control. <laughs> like, like, you guys, you're doomed. Like, I don't know. Maybe bring this up to people who understand. And like, I'm kind of with you on the fact that I didn't really appreciate the way he went about trying to ex expose it or tell Slick Raps about it. I think he could have been a bit more deliberate in that sense. If I'm just uh, someone who's running their Twitter account and I don't know anything about white hack hatting, uh, <laughs> I'm just like, hey, I don't get like a vibe check. I don't understand that. I'm sorry. Like I... I'm just here to help people buy five cent skins and we upcharge them for 20 bucks. Like it's no big deal. Like, so he could have probably maybe approached it a little bit better. Um, if Inici he really initially, yeah, initially, <laughs> initially it was very vague and uh, even I wasn't sure what the hell he was trying to say to them. Yeah. He did uh, eventually but, email the CEO. Of course. of course he did end up uh, emailing them and, and all the responses were, were terrible. Yeah. Um, so, you know, slick raps, they kind of, yeah, they kind of screwed up. Um, but, you know, thankfully, at least from what they say, uh, payment information was not compromised, which I think is really what's most important. Um, yes, I, I understand that people got emails that had their full addresses. Um, and like, I'll probably get some flack for this, but like, uh, oh, if that's the worst of it, then that's pretty good. Um, because, yeah, I, I don't. I'm not necessarily concerned about getting an email address with my own address. Like I know my own address. It's a, if I was getting emails with other people's addresses or other information like that, I guess I'd be a bit more concerned. Um, but if that, if that was really the worst of it uh, so far from what we've seen, uh, yeah, not too bad. So eh, I, it could have been so much worse, man. Uh, it sounds I, like it was very close to being one step worse, but hopefully that it means, uh, they at least had stored payment and passwords in a separate, maybe encrypted database. I don't know because yeah, he, of course links doesn't say specifically that customer payment or passwords. He said admin account details, including password hashes, customer billing addresses, shipping addresses, email addresses, email addresses, phone numbers. 
API credentials for PayPal payments, API credentials for Braintree, API credentials for ship here. So all of their payment handlers, the API credentials for them, never once does this, does links actually say like, I have everyone's payment info, but again, I'm not a security expert. So maybe, maybe that is what he's saying. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, obviously none of it is good. Uh, I think my point is just that it could have been a lot worse. Um, you know, credit card information wasn't being shared, at least to our knowledge. Yeah. So it could have been worse. It sucks. Um, if, if, if you're a slick wraps customer or were a slick wraps customer, they, all they tell you to do is reset your password. whoop de do. <laughs> uh, and if you were guest checkout, then you don't have anything to worry about because apparently they don't keep all that stuff on record. But if you're if you're one of those people um, who are you know paranoid or just concerned at all, uh, maybe just start changing up some passwords. Yeah. Um, you know it, that doesn't kill you. I know it can be a pain, but it's better than having all your stuff hacked. Um, and if you really need to buy a skin, I guess do it from D Brand or, or Toast. There's a local company called Toast sure. here in Portland. Um, I'm pretty sure they haven't been hacked yet. So check out Toast. Sure. They've got real wood covers for a whole bunch of good stuff. I feel like there's a company called Skin or something too. Is there a company called just Skin? And I think they might do the same thing. I would I Google know. that, but I have a feeling the results might not be <clears throat> appropriate. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, you know, in this day and age, everything is getting hacked. Um, uh, it's really, this seems I, really bad though. I mean, bad yeah, it, in a sense that they left their website open, which had apparently the, the, the third party that accessed this after the fact and sent all the emails to everyone saying what happened. Um, they said we have emails of what, like 370,000 customers or yeah. something. So if you have, you know, almost 400,000 customers in a database, uh, you owe them all to protect that. Info. I mean, you, even if you have two customers, you still owe it to protect, but sure that, that big of a group that's a lot of uh, people that's pretty bad that's pretty bad and My to be able to access yeah. it so easily totally. i mean this dude said he could have deleted their company and i'm sure if it was anybody else that wasn't the uh the white hat hacker type as we've declared him the uh they would have or they would have yeah asked for a bounty. i mean like we're talking so anyway that happened today everyone yeah Crazy. I, I assume they'll just get sued. I'm sure there's uh, plenty of lawyers out there already working on the class action uh, because somehow their clients were affected monetarily somehow or some ridiculous thing. So this was probably not the last we've heard of this Slick Wraps thing. I'm pretty sure they still don't even have their site really under control. Uh, we don't know who's in control of the Slick Wraps website. So for now, uh, according to Links, the same guy who posted all these exploits, just don't use their website for a while because um, because <laughs> no, they're not in control and uh, it's scary times. <laughs> it's scary times. Uh, the other company is not skin. It's skin it as everyone has posted. Ah, skin, skin it. Skin it. Skin it. Docs. S K I N I T. So there's 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 a handful of these companies out there. You might want to uh, maybe not uh, give the financial information over to slick wraps for a while. Yeah. Yeah, Riggs is saying he already has PTSD from this. Yeah, this was a traumatic experience. If you woke up, I mean, imagine getting that email and there's, boom, there's your address. Slick Wraps is hacked. And your phone uh, number. Yeah. yeah, no, totally. I mean, that is, it's worrisome. Okay. <laughs> and a judge could probably see that 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 worriness or that 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 feeling of worry that you felt uh, is deemed of a little bit of uh, compensation. So also, I would just like to point out real quick that I thought this was just another stupid promotion that the so skin too. companies do. I, I was so like, oh, too. they got hacked. And let me guess, they got hacked. And so their site's 50 percent off like it always is. Like, I hate I had these, to say that in the write up companies. because I assume somebody's going to go, Colin, this is just one of those like, oh, stupid promos they always do. Yeah, yeah. It's oh, April Fool's. So because these companies do stupid promotions like oh. that. So. Yeah. At first I thought it was just a joke. <laughs> That's what hoping. happens when your marketing is a joke. Uh, everything that happens to you uh, just looks like a joke. So yeah. it's unfortunate. Good luck to slip uh, Slick Wraps and to uh, all those affected. Yeah, hopefully everything gets uh, sorted out there. Uh, speaking of a uh, of settlements, 
as has been pointed out in the chat as well. This week we got, uh, I don't actually have this on our script, but we have two Google phone related settlements rolling out. <laughs> kind of weird to have that happen in one week. Original uh, Google Pixel and Nexus 6P settlements are here. So uh, let's see. The original Google Pixel settlement was based on uh, speaker and microphone issues. That original one had lots of those. Uh, the Nexus 6P was a boot looping issue and also, I think, a LTE. battery drain issue. So or Huawei. No, Huawei, yeah. So Huawei and HTC this time. Um, so if you had any of those phones and you joined in these lawsuits that propped up, you possibly got paid out this week. Uh, I think the 6P was, or not the 6P, uh, the Google Pixel, I think, was up to 500 bucks. There was also a tier around 350 and then there was like a really low tier, like 20 bucks. For the 6P, um, I think it topped out at 350? 350? Mm. Oh, no, maybe 400 if I had that in front of me. I should. Um, Up that. And uh, if you just joined it as a former 6P owner, you uh, you got money anyway. So I got a little $15 uh, PayPal deposit today out of nowhere that I was not expecting. $15.79 to be exact. Nice. Congratulations. I uh, I never bought a six pack. I was given one, so I didn't really feel comfortable taking money. Um, I, did. I did. Oh, okay. I, mean, yeah, I, see, think, I, I think I bought a couple anyway. But yeah, you bought a couple, but I think I was just given one from Huawei, one of those gold ones we got at CES oh, yeah, or right. whatever. So you know, I didn't feel comfortable. You know, that's that's whatever. I yeah, you know, I believe in karma. So yeah. <laughs> um, shout out to everyone who got some free money today, though. It looks like some people are balling out. Feel free to. Donate that money to us and we'll put it to good use. I'm still trying to figure out the differences in what people were paid. Like yeah, Timothy some says got he got 20, yeah, 29 and 11 15. cents where I got 15 and 79 cents. What the hell? One poor guy got $5.82. Yeah. Nate Clements. That Nate, sucks. What the hell? I would I'd sue him again. <laughs> get, get all that money. Pretty wild. So anyway, it's 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 uh it's something I've never seen before. Two Google phones in one week, uh payments through uh through settlements not good not a good yeah. look that's two phones in a row too not good i i like what rig says he says little google phones are so bad that you were likely to get reimbursed years later i mean so like if you buy a google phone you're actually putting an investment in your future because you're going to get a return on that device <laughs> a, it's a solid return that's not it's actually pretty oh, good oh man what a way to look at google phones yeah so how much do you think we'll get for the pixel 4 in like i don't know three years or four years Oh, that's easy. 50 bucks, 100 bucks. I mean, there's something's bound to go wrong with this phone. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, when we uh, when we get cancer from the uh, the radar that's beaming us oh, in the throat yep. all the time, oh, this might be a big maybe. settlement. Just yeah. kidding, by the way. There's no proof that that will happen. Yes. <clears throat> just just kidding. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, all right, so moving on from the settlement talk. Android 11 is officially here as a developer review. Yeah, uh, Android 11, sort of also Android R. And the reason I say that is because Google's calling it Android 11 developer preview. If you flash it on a phone, which your boy's done right here, uh, it says Android R on the phone. So oh. it is Android R, but we know we're done with the dessert name thing. So we're just going to call it Android 11 officially, even though on the phone it's R. It's, you know, it's, it's Google. It's kind of what they do. Uh, let's, what, what should you know? Well, it's the first developer preview, and it is a developer preview. This is not a beta. Can't sign up for the Android beta and get it on your phone. Um, it's only for developers. In fact, Google's kind of making it sound like the first three are developer previews and that they won't be in beta. Like you, you should just not, you should just not put these on your phone. Um, however, if you want to live a little wild, Pixel 2, 3, 3A, and 4 are all eligible. Of course, the original Pixel which is making people money this week, uh, has been retired. So no more updates for it. Um, yeah, a little Android 11 developer preview. You're, just, you're trying to trying to work on that focus? Yeah, just making sure I look good. Yeah, perfect. Uh, let's see. So again, I've got it up on this phone. Did you put the, Did you put it on a phone? What? No, I don't. Uh, no, I've got the... I've only got the Pixel 4 XL, and it's like still my daily once I'm done with the Z Flip, so I'm not about that life. Once... Once we get some four A's, I'll flash it to this, and then and I'll, then I'll try it. But until then, and then like look at the, the list of what's new. It's, it's, I don't need to try that oh, I've, stuff. Oh, I've got it running. Good. I've got it. I've got it run. Um, here's uh, here's the breakdown though, real quick of uh, when you might be able to get this. Yeah. So 
February, which is a month earlier than normal. We got this first developer preview. Then there will be another one in March and another one in April. And then May's Google I.O. And that's when the beta releases will start. So we may have three full developer previews before that goes beta. Uh, last year, just a little bit different. The first developer preview you could flash as a beta right away. So I'm not sure why this one they believe is so much more buggy or maybe last year they just ran into enough issues by giving everyone that early access that they said, yeah, let's not. Um, I do have it up and running and it's definitely got some issues. So I would not recommend anyone go ahead and uh, and flash this thing. Uh, let's see. So what's new since you just said there's nothing cool enough for you to put it on your daily driver, which I have done. Um, let's see. Again, it's it's Android R, but we're we're calling it Android 11. There will never be an R name. Well, what are some good R names that might be desserts? Red Velvet Cake. Could be Red Velvet. Mm, uh, Rolos. Rolos are pretty good. Rolos like are Rolos. really good, actually. Big Rolo uh, fan. Oh, really? Okay, weird. Uh, Chocolate I mean, and caramel? Come on. Just, oh, well, yeah, no, of course. I mean, they're okay, but Reese's, Rocky Road. Oh, oh Android Rocky Road. Rocky Road That's would have been a good cool. one. Yeah. Sarah so, says yeah. Rarshmallow. Yeah, Rarshmallow, sure. Yeah, Rush Mero. Speaking of Sarah, with the uh, $5 donation uh, earlier and said, sad that Android 11 will probably be the 2XL's last major update. We're nearing the end, folks. Uh, yeah, it actually probably will be. If the original Pixel got killed last year from updates, 2XL, 2 and 2XL are up this year. That's probably it. So, yeah. yeah, Rocky Road would also be great, I think, because right, that's not like copywritten by anyone. that You could just use just a generic Rocky term. Road. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that would have been cool. How does Rocky Road just become a generic term that anyone could use? It's very weird. I guess it's not it like it's not like the word Apple. I, mean, I guess it is kind of like the word Apple. Just a generic term. That's very yeah. I never thought about that before. Yeah. That's deep, Rocky. guys. Jeez. Yeah, because everyone's got a Rocky Road flavor. You go to the grocery yeah. stores, everyone's got a Rocky Road yeah. ice cream. So that's so interesting. Yeah. Huh. All right. Uh, anyway, so yeah, there won't be an official dessert name, maybe internally. I think Google kind of does it sometimes to have a little fun. I'm sure we'll find out what it might have been. Either way, mm -hmm. Android 11. Uh, so what's new? Uh, dark themes can now be scheduled. I don't know why this was not there last year with Android 10 when they introduced it, but it's there now. You can have it turn on by sunset or sunrise or at a custom time. It's just like the uh, night light, which has had a schedule forever. Same exact options. I, again, I do not know why this wasn't there last year. Uh, were the bubbles... AKA the Facebook chat heads like bubble messaging system. That's cool. It is here. Uh, it was supposed to be an Android 10. Then Google immediately pushed it back to Android 11. It's here now. Uh, it doesn't really work very well in this first preview, I should say. Um, so it should certainly improve over time. But what it'll basically give you is Facebook chat heads experience in any messaging app, not just Facebook chat heads. I'm That's sure it'll be great. I'm actually kind of looking forward to it because it's been a while since I've touched Facebook Messenger. Um, let's see. They're going to start grouping conversations that you're having in messaging apps in your notification area. Uh, they're going to let you reply to people in notifications with media. So you could like paste an image in there and send to somebody. So we're getting more powerful here in the notifications. They've changed up the location permission, which last year with Android 10, it gave you three choices where you could deny it. You could say only use while the app is open, or you could say, let it access my location all of the time. So they're limiting that further. Now you can have it say only let it access location this one time or only while using the app. So that old option of let it just use location whenever the hell it wants, that apparently is going away. That seems like a big change that could really impact a number of apps. So we'll see how that plays out. Mm. Uh, right now there's screen recording natively. You can just re record whatever's on your screen. That was there in Android 10, then gone. So we'll see if it sticks around. Um, the guys at XDA found some uh, additional screenshot controls. We might finally get scrolling screenshots, which uh, Google is calling extended screenshots, it appears. Uh, let's see. With the Pixel 4, we got a new motion sense gesture. I don't know why this was a part of an Android 11 developer preview, but it was. Um, and it's a pause. So you have your phone and you put your hand over and you go uh, like that. Instead of waving back and forth, you just go uh, and it pauses it. It works fine. Uh, you can also resume music by doing that. Uh, what else? It's like pinning favorites to the share menu. Like this stuff is not really that exciting. They talked about more 5G stuff, more support for pinhole and waterfall screens, biometric improvements. 
more Google Play system updates. That's actually a good thing, but I, that's still such a weird behind the scenes thing that it's hard to really talk about. Spam call stuff. I don't know. This is for a first developer preview. It's not very exciting. Just being straight here. There's not a lot of changes going on. I think there's some stuff that's possibly been uncovered, you know, like the screenshot thing that XDA found. Um, I think nine to five Google found something where there was maybe like a string that said like the bottom. So you're uh, in your, in your doc, those, those, those apps down there in my doc that I set that Google may be contemplating an idea where those change depending on the time of day. Oh, don't do that. And I was like, you better not. <laughs> don't and touch my icons. Yeah. The icons I set do not Ooh. mess with those. So yes. I think they found something that mentions that could be in the future. It better not. Uh, there's some other things like the payment thing that we expected to come within the power menu, which Google actually hinted at in one of the last Android 10 updates that might be here. There's like, there's evidence of maybe the music controls of an app jumping into the quick settings area rather than as a notification. So there's some things Google's playing with. It's just so early. It's only February. Again, we're a month earlier than normal. We have no idea what this is going to shake out to be here in the end. Mm. That's what we got so far. Still exciting. Um, of course, I was out of town when all this was going down. I was at an event and it's a, uh, it was uh, exciting just to know that, uh, you know, it, it's coming, but we are still a long ways away, even from the actual beta where your average person can download safely yeah. and uh, uses a daily. So, you know, for now, just, I guess, rely on us for all of your Android 11 coverage. <laughs> Kellen will be your <laughs> guinea pig. So if you have any questions concerning Android 11, uh, feel free to direct those directly to him. Yeah, you you really shouldn't flash this thing. Uh, while my battery life has been fine, those are kind of one of those things you worry about and my cellular connectivity has been fine. Right. If you pull notifications down in Hangouts, for example, and you go to type in there in the notification, I can't get the keyboard to show half the time. So I just uh-huh. have to open Hangouts, right? So there's a, there's some things that are certainly broken um, that have just kind of made it a bit frustrating. So, yeah, I wouldn't recommend everyone go out and mess with this thing. Does Google Pay work? Does Bluetooth work? Does all that stuff? Uh, I think I tried to set up Google Pay. And I got to a screen where it said another app is trying to overwrite this screen. Please mm. kill that so it can function. So, you know, Google's doing security stuff behind the scenes where they're really trying to limit everything from being able to talk to each other. So I'm not sure if that was a bug or if I, so I don't really know if Google Pay works. Interesting. There's apps that don't work already. Like I opened the Best Buy app mm. and it opened and then just closed immediately. But then I got a notification from it as if it was working, but I can't open it. So there's just mm. there's some bugs. Don't use it. All right. Just, just don't. Did I talk. wipe cash? Yeah, I fully Three unlocked times. the bootloader, wiped everything, relocked the bootloader. I mean, it's I, I yeah, I think I've fully cleaned it like three times in the process. So yeah, uh, let's see. One other thing, uh, Pixel Five news, sort yeah. of related potential. Yeah, I think it was. Uh, yeah, XDA noticed uh, something where they might there might be a new feature in the Pixel Five that could share a battery, which is kind of like. What is Samsung calling it? Wireless power wireless share. Wireless power share. Yeah. So wireless power share, which is reverse wireless charging, where you could use the juice in this and charge up like earbuds, like Pixel Buds, right? Yeah. So uh we might get reverse wireless charging or battery share on the Pixel 5. Um, and then Pixel 5 showed up in AOSP for the first time, where a Googler actually referenced Pixel 5. There's nothing else to learn from that other than it apparently is a thing. Nice. Oh, so it was big news, but it's Android 11 developer preview, so there's not a ton of stuff to get really excited about, unfortunately. Sorry, everyone. Yeah. I don't know. Google needs to be careful with that battery share stuff. Pixel Pixel batteries are not known to be large and, and good. So Yeah, imagine having wireless power share in a phone that has a sub-3,000 million battery. <laughs> nah, what, like, do ideal. you think Google's going to do that again? you think the Pixel 5... There'll be no, a 5 and no. 5 XL, and the 5 will have just this tiny little battery. Do you think they actually learn? Because I don't get the feeling that Google listens to many of our criticisms. Yeah, I don't know. It would be really funny if they uh, if they didn't. <laughs> but it's Google. you know. They, they so. really just do their own things. That yeah, they, they think are cool. Just, yeah. Which is they fine. Sometimes they're right. Sometimes things are cool. 
Oftentimes, and it, yeah, you know, and it's going to be nine hundred dollars or a thousand bucks, and it, it'll all have five G. Everything's going to be so stupid expensive. This year. Yeah, I think. Yeah, it's stupid. All right, let's talk about flippity floppity Zed. Oh, flippity floopity. All right, so Tim has a Galaxy Z Flip, Samsung's flip phone. I think he's working on a review of sorts at this moment. In case you guys really want those final thoughts, but uh, curious, yeah, you've had it for a full week. Had it for. A- Full week. Do you love this phone? Do you love a flip phone in 2020? Oh, love is a strong word. Uh, but I really <laughs> do, but I really do like it. So got the phone here, floopity floppity. Um, had no problems at Best Buy. Went there with my order number and my ID uh, and for the in-store pickup and had no problems. Didn't have to riot or go to jail or anything or, you know, assault, anything like that. So it, all the stories you read on Twitter was fake news. So, uh, the phone, <laughs> what to say? So, so my main takeaway here that I'm kind of writing right now, which is like way too long is that this is a good phone. Um, it's, you know, it's in terms of specs, it's definitely a mid to sort of the high, high end range device. And I say that because while it has a lot of Ram and a good processor, um, you know, it's only got dual camera system. So unlike the, say the galaxy fold or an S 20, and those start with three cameras, all that, you know, it's got a small battery, a small ish battery, uh, 3,300 milliamp hour, I believe. Um, and that's a dual battery. So they've got two batteries connected, um, so you technically have a single battery, but you know, the battery life for me has not been great. If you follow me on Twitter, you'll know that I've said already a couple of times, like the battery life is, is not very good. Um, and for a display that is full HD plus, I mean, it's a, it's a very pretty display, uh, but, uh, certainly not, you know, that, that high end S 20 display. That's surprising so, though, that the, uh, at a full HD and a 3,300 million power battery that it's. Battery life's not very good. Yeah, it's not too great. Um, and of course, it's not 120 hertz or anything like that. So, yeah. uh, you know, you're you're kind of missing out on some of those like marquee features that I guess you're getting with the S20, but they're completely different products. You know, I mean, yeah. uh, the big thing for me is unlike the Galaxy Fold that I didn't think was all too, um, I guess, sort of tough. You know, I, I, I felt like it was such a fragile device. This phone is completely different. Like this feels, it's a little tank device. Um, I saw when I was at the unpacked event, I saw a dude drop it on concrete and oh yeah, picked it up and it was totally <laughs> fine. Now I do not recommend anyone else Please do that. Yeah. Uh, but the phone was working good and it just feels a lot better. You know, like the, the art of opening and closing it, you don't feel like it's, um, fragile or delicate or anything like that. You feel like it can take some abuse. And when Samsung says like that the folding machine and their testing broke before the phone and the hinge did, I believe them. I mean, it's it just feels like a very solid built device. Um, uh, but you know, so the downsides: battery and then the speaker. Speaker is absolutely atrocious. It's the worst sounding speaker I've heard in a very long time. But of course, it's a single firing external bottom facing speaker. Yeah. So it's not very good. Don't expect a lot from that. But, you know, it's a it's a phone that folds. So while I want to be critical of it in this post that I'm writing, I'm trying to like I'm not trying to blast it too hard because what Samsung did here is actually pretty cool. It's it's priced under, you know, what Motorola gave us and that phone was oh, that was offensive. Uh so what Samsung did here is actually very cool. Um now, again, the uh, 1.1 inch one inch super AMOLED ticker display right here. I can uh, focus that in for you, maybe. Oh God, oh, it doesn't right. stay on long. It's so obnoxious. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, thank goodness. So it's totally worthless. Um, hundred yes. percent. Yeah, like all you can see is the time. You can see the oh, notifications, like the I. Oh yeah, it's touch. Oh come on. So it's t- but like you can't. You can't interact with notifications. Oh, right. Yeah. And then when you have music. They're telling you they're there. Yeah. It, they're just telling you they're it, It's not very good now. I'm out of focus. Um, so not not the greatest experience on the outer cover. Like next year, if they do another one of these, the Flip 2, if they give you a usable display out here, kind of like what the Razer had, uh, then we're talking. Of course, if you double tap <laughs> on the power button, you got a little selfie action going. 
But which is just silly. You can't even properly frame a, a you shot. Can't, of you can't. I mean, really, the best thing you can do is have it sitting somewhere, like on a table. Yeah. And then, so I was like, every time I kind of I'm doodling on guitar and I come up with a good idea, I use my phone and I take a video of it. That way, I can see where my fingers are positioned and all that good stuff. But so this is awesome because I can just set it on the table and start doing a video recording. And it has the wide angle, so I don't even need to be very far from it. So video recording has been a blast with the flippy phone and, you know, and it actually stands there like that. Unlike the razor, okay. which I believe did not actually. No. Yeah. It was have, like this. Exactly. <laughs> pathetic. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> pathetic. So this phone really kicks butt in that regard. Uh, also, Samsung pay. I'm back, baby. Absolutely loving it. Um, yeah. So that's Galaxy Z Flip. Do you have any questions? So, so it sounds like pretty cool device with a decent set of specs that does a lot of things. It's obviously enormously priced and kind of just ridiculously priced in a way. But you've also used the Fold. You yeah. seem like this you like maybe better than the Fold. Yeah. At least you have less worries about using it. And that was one of those things you and I, I think both talked about with the Fold is it changed the way we used a phone, which sucked because we were so scared that anything was going to destroy it, that we were careful where we put it. We didn't let people use it, all that stuff. This one, it seems like you feel a little bit differently about that. Uh, that's good. Yes. But I kind of get like, there's this, it seems like you're this close to going, this is sweet. I really like this phone. But then there's something where you aren't quite ready to say, yes, this is actually sweet. And I can't tell like, why. Is it the flipping? Because remember with the razor, what I hated was constantly having to open the damn thing. That just got that, that just gets old. Yeah. And that's and that's what it is, man. Like I notice it especially when I'm out and about or walking my dogs. If I want to go I'll open up Spotify real quick, I'm listening to music. Like good luck. You know, it's been cold, so in the morning I've got gloves on. I've got two yeah. dogs on leashes. Like I can't hold them and and i'm really afraid to open really it with hand, yeah. one you, you don't want to one hand it all too much because you're gonna jam your thumb in there and probably scratch your plastic aka glass display yeah. controversy oh, um so you know the one-handed operation a total pain and of course it's it's 1400 bucks you want to be careful with it just like those galaxy <laughs> folds they're 2000 bucks you don't want to risk that so and there's zero water resistance so in, a, right. in the day where every phone's getting ip68 and we can be a bit more tougher on our super fancy devices. These phones still don't offer any of that protection. So you do need to be careful. Um, as people in the chat are saying, there is no Bixby button. So that's a huge pro. Nope. Um, yeah, I mean, like you had with the Razer, it's just kind of a pain to use. Uh, but at the same time, I've been to a couple of places now where I've opened it up, say, to use Samsung Pay or whatever. And people are like, whoa, what is that? And I have to say, ugh, I give them the the rundown. I'm like, well, welcome to the future. This is this is what's coming because these are only going to get better. This is already really good, and it's right. only going to get better once these things, once they're able to make these with say water protection, or you know, throw in all the cameras or have a bigger display and all that. And that's gonna happen. I mean, down the road, we're gonna have phones like the S20 or whatever specs wise, and you're gonna be able to fold it, and it's gonna be awesome. So. Yeah, you know, for being the first rendition for the clamshell design, I prefer this more so than the fold because first the fold was huge. I mean, that thing looks like a freaking brick in your pocket. Yeah, yeah. It's a little offensive. Um, this thing, not so much. I mean, it's compact, tiny. It opens real nice. It feels good. I mean, of course, watching videos are, is kind of weird on a very tall device like an ice cream bar like this, ice cream sandwich. So it's a... Uh, it's cool. And the camera is good. I have a lot. I have a whole lot of thoughts coming up. So you'll probably be able to read yeah. that Monday morning because it's just uh, there's a lot to say. So yeah. Nick Pearson in the chat says we don't need folding phones. It's a fad. I don't I don't necessarily agree. Um, I sure like I could say, yeah, OK, we don't need folding phones. But being a consumer, these companies, they don't care about what you need. I mean, they they want to make things that uh, are cool and that people will spend money on. And from what we saw, you know, with the Galaxy Fold and the Z Flip, these phones sell out instantly. So they don't have to make a ton uh, to make it seem like they're successful. So 
This thing is already back ordered for a month. Uh, if, if do they restock one. last night? I think they restocked. Is it back? Can you buy them still? Or do they sell out again? I, you, I didn't even. Well, know. you can buy them, say on Best Buy, but they're not going to ship to you until March. Oh, so, were, from, oh yeah, from from what I saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I shout know. out Nick though, who just said that for uh, the dollar ninety nine dollar uh, ninety nine pound donation. Thanks, Nick. Ah, yes. Um, yeah. So I and don't. No seeds. Be sorry. No seeds. Be also dropped too. It says, "Damn, I'm late again." Thank you, Nick, thank you, No Seeds B, for the donos. Appreciate that. Thank you, No Seeds. So, a uh, great little device. I don't think it's a fad. Um, I, I honestly could see yeah. this becoming the thing. I would take this over uh, 5G at the moment. <laughs> like, yeah, because that doesn't have 5G. Exactly. Yeah, I don't, I don't think totally I agree fine. that it's a fad either. Um, using not that phone, but using the flip phone version and the mini tablet version, which was the Galaxy Fold. And hearing about that there's a Galaxy Fold 2 coming that potentially has all the cameras, S Pen functionality, possibly, probably more durable, that sort of thing. I still see where they fit. I think the problem is they're almost always going to be really, 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 really expensive um, for a while. And so I think it just kind of puts it out of out of grasp of most people. Mm-hmm. Um but that said, like there are people that might want a small phone. If they can reduce the price on things like the phone you have, there's a whole bunch of people I think that would love a flip phone that's just tiny. They can toss in a pocket or a bag, open it up when they want to use it that aren't addicted to their phones, right? And use, have like five hours of screen on time every day. There's a lot of people that might want a phone like that one you have, just they don't want to probably pay 1400 I still like the tablet style, which is weird because I'm not a tablet guy, but the thing is that it gives people choice, right? So when we have these again, you still have the regular Galaxy S20, normal style phone like this, right? Then you have the clamshell one like you have, and then you have one that possibly opens up and does multiple things and becomes a tablet. So you have three different styles of phones. So that's why I don't think it's a fad because I think it's a choice thing and choice is good. People like different things. We don't all want giant ass these we might want to full so i that's why i don't think it's really a fad i think it's just going to give people choice the problem is we just have to reduce that price down so it becomes a thing everyone can afford but exactly i mean but the fact is the this phone while not you know the same in terms of specs of the s20 ultra it's 20 dollars cheaper than the s20 ultra yeah. um so it i if you want to get your hands on some folding action, it, it's cheaper than Samsung's top tier device right now, which and is like, and the Razer, which is so sad, right? Uh, Motorola, I don't know what you're doing. So, so that thing's just dead. The yeah. Motorola Razer is dead. Exactly. So if you do plan on picking up the Z Flip, I actually think you'll you'll like it. If you're actually someone who's tempted by this. It's not a bad device. You know, really the only real downside I've had is the battery. And I think some, something could be done about that because the first day I had the phone, it, it seemed pretty good when I was setting it up. There wasn't a huge battery drain. But then I got a day one update that night and my battery life just kind of went to crap. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if there's something Samsung can do. That, so I'm not really going to – I'm not going to dwell on the battery life right too hard right now. But as it stands, it's not great. So – if you guys have any more questions about the Z Flip, throw them at me on Twitter at Tim Otato. And uh, be on the lookout for my full weeks on or week living with the Z Flip post up next week. Uh, so just real quick, you kind of mentioned and then some other people in the chat mentioned about the, the drama surrounding the, uh, the Ooh, thin, ultra thin glass, ultra the thin UTG, glass. the UTG. ultra thin glass uh, display. I don't really have much to add there. The, the drama is that... Um, it's Zach from Jerry Rig. Everything did one of his teardowns of it, torture test, if you want to call him that, and found that it scratched really easily. Basically, wasn't any more durable than the Galaxy Fold, which was plastic, and this was supposed to have glass. Um, other people have torn it down and found that, yeah, it's glass that's this very thin. tiny. Yeah, it's just this thin. And so, yeah, glass is a fragile thing. I've railed against glass for years now saying that glass on the backs of phones is stupid because glass is not premium. It's not hard. Nasty. It's not great. So when you hear that it's ultra thin, I, I guess I'm just not sure what everyone was expecting. I didn't by no means did I think that this galaxy Z flip that Tim has was going to be 
Gorilla Glass and scratch resistant. I just assumed it was going to be maybe slightly more durable and I wasn't even putting that much. So I don't know. I don't know why everyone had this like overblown expectation that it was going to now be scratch resistant. It's not even thin glass. It's ultra thin glass. Anyway, it's just one of those controversies that the media likes to stir up. And I know we're a part of this a lot of the time. This is just one of those silly ones where it took off last weekend and it was like the biggest effing story the world had ever seen. And Samsung was so misleading and awful. And come on, people, it's ultra thin glass. If you thought that was going to save the world, you are a fool. That's it. Very nice. Thank you. That's all I got on that. Can we move on from it and never talk about that drama again? Yep. Good. S20 pre-orders now open wah, wah, wah. um there's deals to be had if deals you want to, to pre-order had. now is the time because samsung will give you 700 dollars off if you trade phones in 600 dollars if you have an, some phones they'll give you lots of money um everyone does there's not a lot of bogo deals i don't think like we've seen in the past but everyone's doing deals and there's credits and free things and whatever um those are available now we put in an order for an S20 and an S20 Ultra, so we shall have those in a couple of weeks. I wish we could tell you that we will have them sooner, but you guys know our history with Samsung. And uh, that's all I really have to say about that. Um, in sort of related S20 news, which we're looking forward to, uh, apparently they are working on an update that will provide 120 hertz at quad HD resolution. Whereas now if you buy an S20 and you want that 120 hertz refresh rate, you have to limit it down to full HD, which is not the worst thing in the world, but just know that is a limitation. Uh, they're they're working on it for quad HD. So hopefully that happens. Nice. Big stadia news, you know, always oh. the highlight of the week. Um, no such thing as big stadia news. <laughs> the big stadia news is that GeForce now is it launched. <laughs> Yeah, usually. Uh, Stadia, though, new phone support. So from the Galaxy S8 all the way up through the S20 Ultra. So that's S8, Note 8, S9, Note 9, 10, Note 10, 20s. They now have support for Stadia, as do the gaming phones of the world, Razer Phone and Razer Phone 2, and the Asus ROGs. Nice. The ROGs, yep, the 2 and the regular ROG. The oh, the ROG, ROG, the Republic of Gamers. Yes. Um, so the only thing with Stadia there is you can't really play it. So you can't sign up for it. So you need either a Founders Edition controller. Not fa- yeah, no. I just a controller. Premier Edition. Oh, just a controller? No, I think in order to get a subscription, you have to buy the Premier Edition. Well, yeah, to get a subscription. Yeah, there's no yeah. free signups yet. Right. So you can't, well, you can't just like go on and sign up for Stadia. Like you have no. to buy the Premier Edition unless somebody gifts you a Buddy Pass. Buddy Pass. <laughs> then you can sign up too. So you can't really access Stadia, even though all these phones now have it. But hey, we're we're making making strides towards that, uh, that future of Stadia that was once promised. One day we'll get there. Yeah, one day. And then they'll shut it down. <laughs> that's exactly how it's going to happen we'll see if we even get there yeah uh let's see just quickly in 5g news qualcomm announced the snapdragon no, i'm sorry not snapdragon yeah snapdragon <laughs> x x60 modem so Jesus. this is the next gen 5g modem uh the only reason it's really important is because it will be much better than the current 5g modem they have because it will be able to combine different levels of spectrum and uh, make for really fast, better connections, all that stuff. It should be great on battery too. It's five nanometer. And the only reason I'm gonna spend any of this time on it is because it could be good. While this year will probably suck for 5G, this modem could fix that, but it's not coming till 2021, so. Oh, good Lord. I will probably never mention it again. I apologize for the chipset talk on the Droid Life show. Just look forward to 2021. It'll be, it'll be fun. Galaxy S21. In 2021, we get to say that every year now, by the way, because it'll go S21 and it'll be the year. Um, it'll have X60 uh, and AT&T added some more 5G networks, including Fuck. Portland. Awesome. Now I just need a phone that can access it. It's awesome. Well, S20 will be here soon enough. To two weeks. Pre-orders two weeks away from delivery. I hate waiting. Um, I, I am of the generation where it's like I ordered it. That means I want it. 
Yeah, it should um, ship like tomorrow. As was the way I'm built at this point too. Exactly. So that kind of pisses me off. But it pisses me off too. I just I, I want the phone. I want something new. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. And we both just went from flip phones that are new, and now we're already like, yeah, let's just come on, just give us the new stuff. Give us. I, just, I want the Pixel. I want the. I want the four A's, man. I'm ready for those. I'm actually excited for the S twenty. Yeah, Riggs. I am actually excited for the S twenty. I'm excited for that gray one because it looks hot. Yeah. I'm ready for the cameras. I'm ready for 120 hertz. Yeah. I'm ready for that 5G symbol that won't mean much, but I'm ready for it. I'm kind of ready for it all. Yeah, you're going to love it for two weeks. Yeah. And then you're going to be like, I can't stand this. <laughs> yeah. I think I'll be pretty good because what happens is I now have this janky Android 11 build on my Pixel. So I'm already annoyed mm. that it sucks. And no. I'm clearly not going to re back to Android 10 because then I have to set it back up again, which sounds like hell. So I'm just going to get frustrated for two weeks and then go, thankfully, S20. <sighs> The only problem then is I'll be excited, like you said, for two weeks, and then we'll get another developer preview, which will fix a bunch, and I'll go, uh-huh. I only want the new software. I'm a Colin the Blog Bro guy, right? <laughs> and then I'll want to be back on Android 11. Yeah, so we'll see. I'm excited for the S20 for now. Give me oh, two yeah. weeks of waiting, and then we'll see. Yeah, I mean, this is your first experience with, like, a high refresh rate, so that'll be cool, man, like well, that 120 I mean, hertz. You know, it's first experience with 120 hertz. I'm on that 90 yeah, yeah it's for just not dude that uh, 90 like once you experience 120 like yeah, I you'll bet. realize that 90 <laughs> was nothing I bet. like i haven't even noticed it. i forgot that it was a thing you know i picked so. up the uh i was charging the 7t it's on the desk the other day because it has uh that ambient mode that google introduced and so I, mm. i've had it out charging waiting to get that so i could finally play with the stupid ambient <laughs> mode thing because it's the only thing close to having always on display on a, on a one plus phone that's the only reason i cared and that screen on the 7T, I swear, is so much smoother than this one. Mm. And they're both 90 hertz. There's just something about OnePlus just really kind of tweaks and tunes their phones. I feel almost better than anyone. Something about OnePlus phones just fly. They're just smooth. And that thing is 90 hertz and it's full HD. And I don't know, it just looks smooth. Yeah, something's up with like OnePlus phones in, with me. Like, I just feel like I don't like them. I don't like, like them in hand. Yeah, the, like, the they're, like them. they're getting big. Like... Ugh. They're big and heavy. <laughs> and really, yeah. Can we just like go back to small phones for a little yeah. bit? Because I know I everyone wants a where, huge battery. Yeah, but I see it. I, you know, you can fit a decent sized battery in a small ish phone. You I think can. what the S10e last year didn't have a 3000 or 3100 milliamp hour battery, and that phone is tiny. It's ridiculous. Uh, Shout out to OnePlus. Shout out to OnePlus. Uh, I do like their phones. I just wish they were more comfortable to hold. Da, That's all. Da, da, more da, 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 all right. Uh, the lights are up. It is. Uh, and they're blinding. <laughs> it's, Jesus. It's a trivia time. Yeah, we're done. We're done talking about anything interesting in the world of Android. We're now just going to give stuff away. So if you're new around here, welcome to Droid Life's trivia. For the portion of the Droid Life show that we dedicate to trivia. I we love have, trivia. We have five questions. And we will reward five people with prizes. This week's prizes are not slick wraps. They are $10 Google Play gift credits, gift card credit, two, $10 Google Play gift, whatever, codes. Uh, you get $10, $10 to spend on Google Play stuff. Uh, so we'll put a question up. Tim will also read it. You hit that chat live on the YouTube stream. And you just type out the answer as fast as you can. We see your name first. We shall shout you out, assuming you were correct. Then you win. It's that simple. It's very, very simple. Nice. Clinton says that was a short show. Well, we've been live for Good. an hour already. This is kind of, we try to usually do about an hour of talking and then you guys have had enough and then we do like 20 minutes of trivia. It's typically, I think we're right on schedule. Yeah. Sort of. Maybe a little shorter than what it's been. I don't know. Which means we've been talking too much. Felt long enough to me. We're good. <laughs> Riggs keeps trucking the flip, 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 flip. Game Dang over. It. Oh yeah, little flip, man, little flip. Uh, <laughs> I think so I brought, funny. dude. Did I bring that up in my hands on <laughs> unpacked? I, I was know. like, what, I, what happened to little flip? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, we okay. were five minutes late, but whatever. Uh, uh, so yeah, anyway, that's how it works. We're gonna put a question up. Tim will read it. You just answer, and uh, we'll shout your name out. Yeah, Lars says Europeans checking out. No chance in trivia due to latency. Well, with that attitude, you're never gonna win. <laughs> so I mean, you could always try. Come on, Lars. That's just a bad attitude, Lars. Come on. 
It's bad attitude, man. It's Friday. Let's have some fun. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and kick it off with question numero uno, please. All right. Question number one is up. No. In mobile network speak, what does HSPA H is just HSPA stand for. I'm so used to saying a HSPA plus. Yeah. What does HSPA stand for? Does anyone actually know this? I did not know this. No one knows. Just really funny. Eddie Daniels apparently knows this with the correct answer of high speed packet access. He was Love followed it. by Zachary Webb super closely and then uh, not Ben Jacobs. Jacobs. And then Jackson. Jacobs tried, but he just, yeah. I don't know what he was typing there. Eddie but, Daniels first. Yes, Eddie Daniels with the correct answer of high-speed packet access. I had to Google it. I had no idea. I know LTE is long-term evolution. You know what What I find out after Googling some of these things is like stupid. You know, like long-term evolution, dumb. HSPA, yeah. dumb. Like yeah. why don't these things stand for anything badass? I mean, high-speed packet access makes more sense than long-term Long evolution. Sure. Stupid. Anyway. All right, here we go. Uh, as soon as I <laughs> ban the porn that's currently in our <laughs> chat. Okay, there we go. Oh, oh God. Ban, ban it. it. Ban there it. There we go. Oh, 300 seconds this is long enough. <laughs> anyway. All right. Oh, no. <laughs> this should work. Let's just do this. I'm ready. Uh, question number two, please. Stop going away. Wait, maybe everyone else is gone. You and I are just admin, so we can still see. I mean, I can see message oh, deleted, but. Yeah. Jesus. Oh, here we go. I got it. I fixed it. I oh, fixed you, it. You fixed it? Fixed yep, it? Okay. I got it. <laughs> there we go. We usually don't have a spam problem, so I'm still oh. like, I'm new. I'm new to this. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Question right. new, number two, please. All right, question number two is up now. What was the internal code name for the Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge? What was the internal code name for the Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge? It's two words. You'll probably have to Google it. Sorry. God forbid you have to do a little bit of work. The code name, folks, not the year. Hey, Jackson Neaturd with the correct answer of Project Zero. I feel like it should have been codenamed Band Droid Life because this was around the end for us, I think, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, technically. <laughs> codename Band God, you're so hurt. Nah, man, it really, it, fuck, it pisses me off. So, all right. Congratulations. Uh, congratulations, Jackson, with the correct answer of Project Zero. Very awesome. Nice. Bandroid life. I like that. Okay. Question number three, please. <laughs> Question number three is up now. Here's a good one. Who was CEO of HTC from 2004 to 2015? This was our this was our guy for a while. Mm -hmm. Who was CEO of HTC from 04 to 15? Pretty sure he was pretty clueless there for about the last five years. <laughs> yeah, he seemed a little hands off there for a little bit. Uh, so I did see uh, Eric Ortiz with close to the right answer, but a misspelling. So I'm going to have to go with Zachary Webb, Peter Chow, or Cho. Ooh. I don't want to. It's Peter Chow. Yeah. Uh, I think. I thought it was Peter Chow, but, but sure it's Cho. Chow. It's one of those things like you Wait. see it written all the time, but I don't know if I hear Wait, did it. Did anyone spell it the way you did? So oh, now. I'm checking. Looking for proper spelling. Well, let me just make sure I spelled it right. Let's make sure Tim spelled it right first. Uh, <laughs> I'm Googling. Oh, I spelled, I spelled it wrong. I spelled it wrong. So, O-U. Oh, God, I'm such a, I'm such <laughs> a fool. First. <laughs> All right. Um, rolling uh, so back the it chat. was not Eric Ortiz. It's got to be OU. So Zachary Webb still. It was still Zachary <laughs> Webb. <laughs> With Peter C H O U. Oh, Jesus. Funny how that works. Yes. Uh, Jackson, email Tim. Yes, email me. Zachary Webb, congratulations with the correct spelling of Peter Che. <laughs> <laughs> don't care how it's pronounced anymore. I just want this to be over. This is my nightmare. <clears throat> This is my nightmare. We're good. We're moving right along. Absolutely. You didn't get, you didn't get hacked today. So I didn't get hacked, so I'm, I'm doing all right. 
how embarrassing rigs it's not that embarrassing dude like you know i word i do i I've done like a thousand trivia questions. I feel like only a handful have been like incorrect or wrong. So it's not too bad. I don't care. Um, care. So embarrassing. (laughs) Question number four, please. Question number four is up now. Uh, Which LG smartphone focused heavily and poorly on swappable (laughs) modules? I, of course, threw in the poorly. But which LG smartphone focused heavily and poorly? On swappable. Hey, everyone knows this one. Absolutely brutal. Yeah, so brutal. Uh, Eric, Eric Ortiz. Second. Yep, Zachary had it first, but he's already a winner. So Eric Ortiz with the correct answer of the LG G5. Ah, classic. If you had to turn the phone off the swap <laughs> modules. Yeah. I mean, that's one thing you got to give Motorola credit for. The, the Moto Z line was awful and the mods never took off. But at least they figured out a way to take mods off and on without turning your phone off. Yeah, it's not ideal. <laughs> I mean, LG's like, well, let's uh, let's create a camera grip. And everyone's like, that's it? A, ca- a camera grip? And I have to turn the phone off to do that? Did they, there, was a, was, there was one more, wasn't there? What was the other one? I thought there, did they have another one besides just the camera grip? Well, I think they had an audio one that did something. Maybe I don't know. It was. It was, it was a DAC or something. Oh, yeah, Dak. Maybe. I don't know, man. That <laughs> phone sucked. It was bad. Yeah, there was a, a B&O Dak, I uh, think. An extended battery mod? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Oh, uh, wow. That's so brutal. I don't know if they ever shipped any of them either. <clears throat> Good stuff there. Man. All right, uh, anyway. it's that time. We've come to the final question. Last chance to win $10 of Google Play credit. You can, uh, with that 10 bucks, you can go rent JoJo Rabbit. You could buy some apps, buy an ebook, get learned. I don't care. Do whatever you want. Do what you need um, to do. Yeah, so here we go. Question number five. Let's do it. Question number five is up now. Here's a toughie. What processor, processor <laughs> powered the droid Bionic? Yeah. What processor powered the Droid Bionic? Uh, looking for the number. So, sure, I'll, I'll accept TI OMAP, but it's got to be the number. It's four, number. four digits in a very specific order. I'm seeing uh, Evan Brown, the first one to have the digits that I need. Are yes. those the right digits? Because 4430. <laughs> Oh, I see yes. it now, yeah. Evan Brown, congratulations <laughs> with the correct answer of the TI OMAP 4430. He just he had 4460 at first and then he then he switched her to 4430. Smart man. 4, yeah, I saw Lars 4460. Yeah, congratulations. Is that the last OMAP phone? Was the Bionic the last OMAP phone? Gosh. I bet it was. I bet that was the end. Because it, it could have been the, the last phone. Year. It certainly wasn't the f- last device because we still had the Moto 360 after that. <laughs> right. Yeah, the Moto <laughs> but, 360 using, I think, the same processor or something even older. That might have been the last phone with an OMAP. Yeah. Evan Brown saying tough questions today, guys. We're like, gosh, I'm sorry. I didn't know they were so tough. You know, test you guys a little bit. Yeah, man. Uh, Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> Clinton says, lol, fun time. Everyone, too bad I don't retain useless info. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know, man. that is trivia for you. I know, Ma- exactly. Maintaining, retaining useless info just so that you can win things. That is kind of the name of the game. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I'll just I'll keep making them tough. We can't make it too easy. I mean, gosh. Maybe too easy. Um, Come on now. Yeah. Anyway, hope everyone has a fantastic weekend. I'm just going to get right back to work on my Z Flip review. That way you guys can enjoy it. Email Tim if you did win. Yes, email me. Winners, I'm pretty sure all you have won before, but just in case you haven't, I'm going to enter my email in the chat. Send me an email. I've got your codes waiting for you. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't have much else. Uh, Just want the S20. I'm over Android 11 because it's buggy. And uh, I really got nothing else. It's kind of one of those weird weeks where it seemed like there was big stuff. And now it's Friday and I'm like, okay, Friday's over. All right. Yeah, yeah. Yay. NBA's Lars back. Says, 
Yeah. Oh, yep. NBA is back. We don't have Lillard, though, so who cares? Oh, so uh, not paying attention. That's correct. Yep. Lars is going to play some Red Dead Redemption on Stadia. Very nice. Nice. Brady to the Seahawks. Yeah, that'll be the day. <laughs> Did you see the Sonic movie? No, but everyone no. seems to kind of like it, right? Reviews are actually good. Yeah, that's not a movie I'd pay to see in theaters. That's definitely Probably one not. that I'll check out when it's on sale to rent for like two bucks years yes. from now or Possibly. when it's on TV or when I it's just... on Netflix, you know, free. Yeah, I'm not. It... Yeah, it looks fine. <laughs> and like and I love Sonic like I grew up on the OG Sonic on Sega Genesis. Yep. 60 was that 64 bit, 32 bit, whatever bit. Whatever Genesis was, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that was, I mean, that was my game. And then Sonic and Tails and all that. Like, oh, man, I love those guys. Um, Knuckles. But, yeah, I just don't, I don't care. <laughs> kids movie. I do kids have a kid. Movie. I forgot. I, I do have a kid. Could take him. I showed him the preview. And I think he thought it was okay, but he has no idea who Sonic is yet. So, yeah, I I said, probably going to wait on. 16 bit 16 yeah, is that what it was Jeez. i love the I, just remember, I was a genesis guy i was not a super nintendo guy i was a genesis guy yeah i just remember my older brother had like the console that said the bit count on it oh, yeah. so it kind of stuck in my my mind but <laughs> yeah sega sega genesis was awesome i played a lot of jurassic park aladdin a lot of impossible games vector man i think it was that game was like so difficult all i played was sports games growing up NBA Live and uh, Joe Montana football. Joe Montana. See, I played Madden 95. And I early was on, the Joe Montana football games for Genesis were off. They were legit football games. And then that yeah. just burned out because Madden took over. But, yeah, sports games. And then shooters. That's it. So, what was the game? Was it? I'm just trying to, like. No, yeah. See, it wasn't gained. It must have it must've been. Yeah, it was definitely Madden 95. Yeah, there it is. Yep. Man, I'm going to go watch some YouTube videos of Madden 95 and just relive my child. I remember one time I uh, was playing. I threw up a Hail Mary because, you know, I think it was just that time. And it got like intercepted or something. I ripped the game, the cartridge, <laughs> out of the thing. And I threw it outside. And I was like, I'm never, ever playing this again. And my mom was pissed. <laughs> but So funny. What is she? The thing know? is, like, you could do that and chuck it and it would bounce off a oh, wall and still work. It'd be fine. You could, you know. I don't really have that. Uh, don't really do that anymore. Exactly. Throw your hundred and sixty dollar Xbox Elite controller. Not a good idea. Don't do that. Oh, yeah. Wings of Redemption. He does it. <laughs> anyway. Shout out to Shout Wings, out to Wings. on the Destroyed Life Show. <laughs> good lord. All right. Uh, on that note, uh, thanks for joining us, everyone. We are. Uh, we're gonna cut it there. Uh, Joy Life Show episode two twenty seven today. Have a fabulous weekend. Hopefully, it's sunny there as it is here. Mm. hopefully the wind is blowing less there than it is here though uh we'll catch you guys probably next week peace